Today, we will train this cube agent to go to the target like an AI warehouse and export to a game using Godot RL agents. This project allows you to train reinforcement learning agents in the Godot game engine using pre-existing RL frameworks. Here's how it works. We run a command in the terminal and run the game in Godot. Python and Godot communicates over TCP, training the AI. After training, we can get the train model as an ONNX file so we can run the AI without Python. This is still in development, so I'd only use it for prototyping or research. Also, this uses a C-sharp package to run the trained AI model. Godot 4 only supports C-sharp for desktop platforms. So if you have to export your game to the web or mobile platforms, I recommend using Unity with ML agents. I'll assume you have Python already installed, so let's create a new virtual environment. I'm going to name it RL, and let's activate the virtual environment. Now we have to install the Godot RL package. It's going to take a while. Go to the Godot RL agents repository and go to examples. I'm going to use stable baselines 3. So I'm going to download this file right here. Now in the directory, place the file right here. Create a new training environment in Godot. Let's create a new game project. I'm going to create a new 3D scene. I'll add the cube by adding character body 3D with a mesh instance and a collision box. Let's assign the material, change the emission to orange, create the floor with a mesh instance, create a new box mesh. Let's turn off the lights, expand it, go to mesh, and click this option to create a static body. At the target, it's going to be an area 3D with a collision shape and a mesh instance. Create a new box shape, create a new mesh, assign a material, change the emission to green so that we could see it without lighting. Now add the walls with collision shape 3Ds. Go to top view and create two box shape 3Ds. And let's expand this a bit and expand this, duplicate each of them and place them to surround the floor. Now the basic setup is done. So let's add a new script. The character body 3D's default script actually does the job. So if you run it by adding a new camera 3D, if we run the scene, you can see that you can move the player with arrow keys in space, but we don't really have to use the space key. So go to the signals menu and connect the signal to the cube script. So the current cube's position is this so i'll just type this position right here this is bad code but i'm just too lazy copy paste this here as well now if you run the scene again you'll realize that if you touch the walls the position resets and if you touch the target it's the position resets as well i'll remove the warnings by adding underscores here we don't need the jumping so we can just comment out this part of the code now the basic setup is done Normally, you would install the add-on with Assetlib, but it seems like this version is actually outdated, so don't download it. Instead, go to View Files. In this repository, download the zip file. Now let's open the file system. You will have this zip file. Unzip it. Go to the folder. In the folder, we have to copy these two. After that's done, we have to enable the plugin from Plugins and select Enable. Now you will be able to search the AI controller 3D node, add it right here, right click and extend script. Go to script templates, go to this file, copy these four functions. Now we have to implement these four functions. I want this cube agent to move into axes X and Z, so the size is going to be 2. I want it to keep moving, so we need the continuous action. I'll name the action move. We can delete this line now. Now for the get reward function, there's actually a variable. So we can just return reward. Now let's create a new vector 2 called move. This vector 2 is going to store the action that the AI outputs. So 
move.x is going to be action move and zero. But let's copy this line and set it to the y variable. So the size is two and the action is continuous. So the action is going to get stored in each index. Now for the get observation, let's just remove this line. Right now the agent sees nothing, but let's implement this later. Go to the cube script. Now let's create a new on ready variable for the AI controller by dragging and holding control. I'll just name it an AI controller. Now what we can do is we can set the cube's velocities x and z to the AI controller's move variable. Now let's test it out. Add the new sync node, activate the virtual environment we set up, and run the Python file we downloaded earlier. Now after this message pops up, run the game. The cube will start moving in random directions. That's the AI moving it. Now let's have the AI actually see something. Go to the AI controller and let's add a few more on ready variables. We'll let the AI see the cube's position and we'll let the AI see the target position so the AI can actually go there. In the observation, we're going to create a new array, enter the cube's position. We're going to observate the target's position as well return the array that we made. We have to make the AI so that it actually wants to go to the target. So let's give it a positive reward if it reaches the target. Add 1.0. We have to make the AI to not touch the walls. So subtract 1.0 from the reward. Also, let's reset the AI controller. This is basically it. Now, if you run the command in Python and actually train it, you will see that it works. But the training process is kind of slow and we can make it faster. You can speed up the game by changing this number right here to, for example, eight. And one more thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a batch environment. We're gonna have multiple environments training simultaneously. Delete the sync node. And then let's create a new scene. Drag the main scene, then duplicate it multiple times. I'll delete the camera here as well. And I'll place a camera to actually see its training. We're going to re-add the sync node here. Let's speed up the process. Let's train the environment again. After a few seconds, the cube reaches the target really fast. So you can make AI environments like this. If you want to export this to an app, First, you need to get Godot with C-sharp support. Keep in mind that in Godot 4 with C-sharp, you can't export to the web and mobile platforms. To export, we need to export the training model. When you're running the Python file, add an argument called ONNX export path. I'll set it to model.onnx. This command will export the model in a certain amount of time steps. The default is a million, so I'll configure it by setting time steps. I'll set the time steps to 100k. You can see the total time steps here. And in my case, if it passes 100K, it's going to end and export the ONNX model. As you can see, if you enter the directory, there is the model ONNX file exported. Now, to actually use this file in Godot, you actually need the Mono version. I'll go install that. Close the current version of Godot and open the Mono version of Godot. Godot doesn't know that we have to use the C -sharp scripts, so you have to create a new dummy script. I'll just create a random script with the language C sharp. And we're gonna delete this right after this. Now, as you can see, now let's just delete the script again. If you run the scene, it's gonna build the net project and it's gonna fail. It's because we don't have the C sharp O and an X runtime dependency. We're gonna add that by first going into the terminal and let's go into the demo directory. We're gonna add the ONX runtime package with this command right here. So copy this command and paste it here. Now it's going to build successfully, but it still doesn't move. Click on the sync node. And before that, move the model ONNX file into the Godot project folder. After you verify that the model is inside the folder, enter the model path. Now, if you run the scene again, it should start working. Now you can export the project. One thing is that you have to put this file in the same directory the executable is located in. This is just a basic video guide of how to use this package. So there's a lot more you can do. Documentation and many example projects are in the repository. Take a look to find out more. If this was helpful, please leave a star in the Godot RL Agents repository.
to thank the people who made this amazing package 